Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. How's everyone doing? Everybody had your lunch? I hope I don't put you off to sleep after a good lunch. So uh, we're here to talk about uh, Red Hat Consulting's cloud migration solution. How to efficiently migrate workloads from legacy to cloud. Uh, I'm Vijay Chabalu. I actually run the OpenStack virtualization containers practice at Red Hat Consulting. Why do you need to migrate to the cloud? I think that's a question that probably you've been hearing all along, right from the keynotes this morning uh, to almost every session that you go to, is some of the common things that you probably would see your business users ask of traditional IT is speed, speed to actually deliver products to the end users at a reduced cost and with seamless management across your infrastructures. Like you heard this morning at the keynote, Every new product and every new shiny object that comes around comes with its own baggage of monitoring, management, and all of the tooling. And as IT and as IT operations, you probably have a lot of tools to actually work with. So the goal is to see how you can efficiently manage both your mode one applications and also at the same time enable migration of those mode one environments to the cloud. <coughs> and uh, what is the opportunity here? Uh, it is basically looking to the future and actually reducing the TCO. Uh, if we actually have any VMware folks in the room, I'm sorry. Uh, the whole solution that we put together is to actually reduce the VMware footprint and actually reduce the total cost of ownership for customers. How do we actually go about doing it? One of the primary things that you probably need is to, you need to standardize and automate uh, the provisioning of your new infrastructures or your new workloads. You actually need to maintain the stability of the platform while at the same time accelerate your innovation. So you probably want to keep your legacy mode one applications uh, intact at the same time working on your new next generation mode two applications. You actually want to reduce your dependency on a single vendor and actually eliminate vendor lock-in so that you actually can work with the community and the broader teams to actually innovate faster. What does Red Hat's uh, cloud migration solution look like? Uh, the goal uh, that we actually bring to bear is work with customers to enable vendor dependency, eliminate vendor dependencies, uh, migrate risk or mitigate risk. Uh, one of the primary questions that you probably have your security and compliance team come to you and say is when you talk about moving to the cloud, how are you making sure that you're compliant with the existing requirements and how do you make sure that it's secure? Uh, we would actually help customers to reduce the TCO by actually working with open source solutions and working with uh, open community. Uh, the goal is to accelerate provisioning. Uh, you've probably been hearing all day long that you have customers who still take 40 to 50 day, uh, days to actually provision a single VM or a single server. So the goal is to actually accelerate provisioning so that you actually are much more agile in standing up new infrastructures or actually uh, developing or deploying existing infrastructures. We want to be able to deliver services faster. In the constant world of changing requirements and changing applications and new business uh, processes, you actually want to be able to build services faster and make them available to your end users. You also want to streamline your processes, uh, remove the ad hoc one-offs. Uh, you want to actually make sure that there's less manual overhead uh, when you're actually building a process around uh, migrating workloads. And at the end, you actually migrate the workloads from legacy to cloud. So if you look at it, the actual migration is probably a tenth of the whole process. How do you actually effectively migrate workloads? You probably start off with a proper discovery session where you actually want to review what your current state is and what your workloads look like. You then want to actually design your minimum viable uh, solution to actually migrate those workloads and then implement in large scale based on the size of the environment. Uh, migration success, uh, it's more than just moving a VM. You can probably move a VM from traditional virtualization environments like VMware and move to OpenStack, but that actually won't give you everything you need. You're basically just moving uh, what is available in the source and moving to the target. You need to actually understand what your current state requirements are and what your future state is and iteratively work towards uh, getting to your future state. You want to actually map your applications 
uh, to the migration and actually build uh, migration patterns. Uh, you probably want to classify your workloads as if the workloads are actually mapped to what we call as cloud washing, which is basically taking what is an existing workload and moving it to a cheaper virtualization platform without actually changing how it works. You actually want it to be cloud optimized. Basically, you want to actually figure out uh, what workloads can actually go to a more scale-out virtualization platform like OpenStack or stay with more traditional virtualization platforms or migrate to cloud-native platforms uh, like uh, containers. Uh, in this case, it will probably be uh, Red Hat's OpenShift platform. You need a platform that actually can orchestrate the migration. Uh, when you actually migrate a VM, your application is not running on a single VM. It is actually running on a bunch of VMs, a bunch of environments, and your application is made up of maybe 15, 20, or 100 VMs together. That actually goes with your firewall rules, your CMDB integration, uh, everything else. So you need to actually understand how to classify those workloads, bring them together, and actually migrate them holistically, because 9 out of 10 customers we talk to don't actually have that mapping available. It's sitting in some developer's head who actually no longer works for the company, or it was a subcontractor who actually came and deployed the application and no longer works. So how do you actually migrate applications together? You need to also be able to design your infrastructure that actually is capable of migrating that at scale. You can probably move workloads one VM at a time manually, but if you actually want to migrate hundreds of VMs at the same time, you need a process that actually can manage and that can scale out. And you also want to manage and enable your people and processes to effectively manage this change. As you're migrating workloads, uh, there's a lot of people that are going to be impacted by it. It'll be your application teams that'll actually be working with new platforms. It'll be the operations teams that'll actually be managing the new platforms and the developers are actually building the orchestration of workloads from going from one virtualization platform to the other. So you actually want to build a team that actually can work with the migration tooling. So our cloud migration philosophy is three-prong. Uh, we actually focus on people, uh, process, and technology. With people, uh, what it means is we don't want IT to actually go and migrate workloads in silo without the end users being involved. So we actually want to drive collaboration across the organization. We bring in the right people uh, to bring in the change within the organization and mentor uh, the resources iteratively to actually develop internal capabilities. We engage in building a repeatable migration factory approach so that you actually build once and reuse the migration factory to actually migrate workloads over and over. And we establish a continuous improvement atmosphere to actually make sure that you actually can evolve uh, these workloads and these migration processes uh, as you actually learn more. The problem that you run into is you can probably migrate 80% of the workloads uh, without too many changes, but it's the last 20% that actually takes you the most time. So you probably want to have a process that can be iterative and you actually can add changes as you actually learn about your 20% that actually doesn't follow the norm. The technology uh, we actually have unique migration tooling and templates to actually help organize, automate, and orchestrate workloads uh, from your legacy virtualization platforms to the cloud. And we actually leverage open source solutions to maximize cost savings and eliminate lock-in. How do you actually make sure that you actually can bring the people together uh, and collaborate? Uh, the other approach that Red Hat takes is that we actually build a migration PMO where we actually work with our internal Red Hat stakeholders and the customer stakeholders and actually bring, uh, build a combined team to actually manage and mitigate risk, uh, secure the commitment of the different teams. So this is probably not where security team comes at the very end and says, hey, I was not involved in migration. What did you do? Want to bring all the teams together ahead of time to make sure the migrations are successful. We at Red Hat actually have developed uh, expertise in this migration tooling to make sure that we actually can help customers migrate massive workloads. What makes up that people, right? If you look at, uh, this is probably, almost every enterprise will probably have a list of all of these roles. The goal is to actually bring all of these people together. Be it the business owner who actually understands why migration is required and how does uh, the business strategy align with the migration goals. An architect, who actually can design the architecture for a customer and uh, help smooth business forward. You need to bring in the operations and development teams together 
And as a part of this whole DevOps mindset, you want to make sure that both development and operations work together in tandem as a part of the migration process. Environments that already have automated testing, you actually can drop in the, uh, tested, the testing routines into the workflow to make sure the migration is actually validated automatically. If you don't have automated tooling in place, then you actually need to streamline your testers to make sure they actually test the migration. You also bring in the security and compliance teams uh, ahead uh, so that you actually always use the security first approach to make sure that whatever you're trying to migrate to is secure and compliant to uh, the enterprise requirements. And then at the end, you also bring in the end user to make sure that the end user's user experience of those workloads when they're migrating from legacy to cloud don't change. Uh, we follow the Agile and Scrum methodology to actually migrate workloads. I'll actually skip this because you've probably been already bored about hearing the word Agile all day long, and I'm sure you'll probably be hearing it for the next five days. So what does the process look like? It is actually a process uh, that was put together to mass migrate thousands of VMs. It is, it's been tested, it's been proven. Uh, it is actually a holistic approach for both management, automation, and orchestration. It's not one, it actually comes with a full uh, gamut end to end. It actually involves uh, application analysis of the migration workloads to understand what's in the workloads, uh, how do you plan the migration, and what the target is. And the migration factory is a standardized set of tooling and templates that are pre-built uh, by a consulting team that actually can come in and help with customer migrations. So let's now go through what a process looks like. Pre-migration, uh, before you actually want to migrate workloads, one of the most important thing is to actually understand what those workloads are. You can probably go to your CMDB and find out what's running on the workloads. You can probably go to your developer and ask him how did you actually install it. But Nothing is better than the actual running instance to tell you what's running there. So we actually have unique management solutions that actually can go into those running workloads and actually gather information about what is running on those workloads. Then we actually engage the application owners to actually classify and tag those workloads and build a validation plan. Once you build a validation plan, you actually want to create the required networking and uh, all of the scoters that are required if it's going to be OpenStack or if it's Rev, uh, build uh, what your point of arrival is, which is going to be a target. Then we actually, we motion the VMs uh, to a shared storage environment. Uh, then we tag the VMs for migration. And how do we actually do it? So the automated di discovery of the management tooling uh, enables us to actually gather the characteristics based on what's running within those VMs. And once we know what's running within them, we actually can build a taxonomy. Once we build a taxonomy, we actually can then classify and group them together, saying, hey, this is, these are actually, these 10 VMs belong to application A, and these 15 VMs belong to application B. And because these five VMs are running Tomcat as your web server, they need to go to OpenStack. These are running Oracle workloads, they need to go to Rev. So you actually can tag them as to what the point of arrival is for each of those workloads. And all of it is done through a UI uh, where you actually can go and tag those VMs. It's like tagging yourself on Facebook. Once you tag it, it'll actually follow this VM for the life of it. Once you do that, you actually go and prepare your point of arrival environment. It actually will include either building your OpenStack target platform from scratch, standing it up, or building your Red Hat virtualization platform and making sure that that's actually made available to the management tooling, so the management tooling knows about the existence. You actually have to build a shared storage environment as a holding area, where you actually can then migrate workloads from one virtualization to uh, the OpenStack platform. Migration day, uh, we don't want to actually migrate running VMs, uh, because you never know what's running in memory, and when you're actually moving from one hypervisor or one virtualization platform to a completely different platform, I don't think there's actually any tooling that exists that actually can migrate memory. Within the same virtualization platform, you actually can move resources from one host to the other, but between platforms, uh, the safest way is to actually shut down those VMs and actually migrate. The way we actually uh, do this is we actually engage the application owners. Now that we actually classify those VMs and tag those VMs as to application, the application owners can actually go and say, 
I'm ready for migration for my application. I've created a maintenance window for my end users. Mass migrate my VMs. All you have to do is go in, select the migration group, and hit submit. It'll actually migrate all those VMs together. Now, what happens in that migration? We actually have what is called as a migrated migration state machine uh, that actually converts the workloads from traditional format to the new formats. Uh, it could be from OVA going to RAW for OpenStack or QCOF2 for Rev or any of the formats. Once we uh, convert and migrate them, we actually inject all the required drivers based on the operating system it's, uh, that's running and make sure that it actually is prepped for uh, the target platform. And once it's done, uh, we actually migrate the VMs to the target platform and apply any of the post configuration steps uh, that are required for the application to start up. We also have uh, an automated testing hook. So if you actually have uh, testing tools in place to actually test the validity of the applications after it's migrated, uh, you actually can uh, inject those into those hooks and actually test the application. And once the testing is done, you either can release the applications to the end users or keep it down till the application owner comes in and checks off saying that migration is good. So, and almost all of this is, can be monitored in real time. If you're running uh, 100 VMs and migrating them at once, every VM migration is uh, tracked individually, and there's rollback in place to actually make sure that if the target goes down, for some reason the migration is not successful, you can always revert back to your source. Post-migration, uh, some of the common steps uh, that you probably have uh, at post-migration is you probably uh, extend uh, the parameters of your target, either you update your existing CMDB, saying it's gone moved from source to target. You want to actually clean up, either it's your automated testing results, you want to decommission workloads running in source, you can relieve space, and actually, at the same time, relinquish hardware and migrate to your new platform. So this way, as you're migrating workloads, you can release hardware in your source uh, environment and actually move to the target and actually use the same hardware. And you can actually divest your old assets. So this is how the whole cloud migration solution looks like. It includes the pre-migration steps that we discussed, uh, the steps that actually happen on the migration day, and the steps that need to happen post-migration uh, before it's released. So we spoke about the people and the process. Now, what actually makes it happen? What is the technology that's sitting behind it? It's actually powered by uh, the Red Hat Cloud Suite. It is actually hosts uh, the target environments that we actually work with, or Red Hat Enterprise Virtualization, or OpenStack. Uh, we're actually working on a roadmap to see how we can actually migrate workloads into OpenShift and containers. Almost all of the management, automation, orchestration, is done using Red Hat Cloud Forms. So technology, we spoke about this. I'll probably talk about this in a little more detail. So what does automated discovery give you? Automated discovery enables you to actually bring in the Red Hat Cloud Forms tool set into your existing environment, completely brownfield, connect it to your infrastructure, and actually learn about what's running in your infrastructures. It actually allows you to understand the dependencies and actually help them catalog and classify workloads for migration. It actually reduces the risk when VMware app characteristics are actually not documented uh, because you actually can learn them on the fly and use that as your source of truth to figure out what's running in those instances. You want to build a taxonomy to identify and group common VMs. It actually reduces uh, errors during mass migration. One of the examples is you don't want to migrate your databases without actually making sure your app servers and web servers are actually going with it. Otherwise, you'll probably have a case where all your app servers and web servers don't have any connections to the database. It also, also leverages data obtained through cloud forms. So it actually acts as the single source of truth to actually understand what's running and uses that to actually build your migration tooling. Uh, the technology uh, of executing the migration. So we actually configure the state machine templates uh, that actually come as a part of the solution. So these are actually uh, repeated 
uh, workflows uh, that actually been worked uh, based on experience at different customers that actually have uh, error handling and rollback paths all built in uh, to actually ensure that the migrations are managed uniformly. We want to make sure that everything that's actually done is automated and orchestrated so that human error actually is eliminated from the migration process. We define a migration window and ensure that the VM ordering and dependencies are properly managed. We want to make sure that the database server is shut down last, but it's actually brought up first. So we actually ensure that the ordering is set so that as a part of migration, uh, we actually keep that ordering in mind. We implement a push button service catalog to perform migrations. So you don't have to go to 15 different places to actually migrate those VMs. Everything is done through a single click of a button. We monitor the migrations in real time. We actually can uh, report predictable outcomes to shareholders or stakeholders, not shareholders, and validate migration to actually notify the owners. This actually, uh, the monitoring of the migration process gives the end user the ability to understand how long is it going to take for the migration. And we actually have the built-in to tell if it's going to take two hours or 15 minutes, and uh, the users can come back after that elapsed time to actually come and check the status. An example architecture of uh, the data flow. Uh, this example is where uh, the source is actually vCenter. So uh, this customer actually wanted to migrate from VMware to OpenStack. So this actually talks about uh, the different steps uh, that the workflow goes through uh, to actually create this workflow. So step one, you actually see 1A, where CloudForms uh, is actually connected to the point of departure inventory, which is vCenter, collects the inventory as to what's running. And once it actually has an inventory of what's happening, it actually then enables you to actually migrate workloads to that shared uh, migration NAS, where you're actually uh, doing a vMotion of your VMs into that NFS shore, and then we actually do an NFS export. Once we export, uh, we actually have the V2V migration uh, infrastructure uh, that's at 4A where it actually is migrating the workload and then pushing it down uh, to NAS as a raw image. And once the image is available on the shared storage, then CloudForms works with OpenStack to actually create a center volume, drops that into it, and then you do a boot from volume, so the VM comes up. And based on the networking configuration that's either uh, collected from the source, uh, if you actually want to keep the IP addressing the same, then you actually want to make sure that you shut down the primary and make sure that IP address is available when you actually move to the target. So the CloudForms state machine engine actually keeps track of that and actually manages it for you. If you actually want to re-IP it, uh, uh, you probably have to inject new workflows in just to make sure that if you're re-IPing it, what happens to your firewalls? What happens to all of the other configuration for different applications that are connected to it? Uh, we actually use uh, Puppet. Uh, for this customer, we actually use Puppet because they actually use that as a configuration management for post-migration tooling. The next example I'll actually show you is almost similar, uh, but where this customer actually wanted us to migrate from VMware to Rev. So this was actually a case where the customer wanted to move away from VMware into a low-cost virtualization platform. And since Rev has almost all the characteristics that you need uh, for a traditional virtualization platform, it actually made sense for them to migrate. So this uh, workflow actually talks about how to migrate uh, workloads. So you'll actually see the difference between uh, Rev and OpenStack is the last swim lane where the target environment was replaced and it probably has less steps because with Rev, you don't have Cinder, you don't need to use Cinder. You just uh, load it into the export domain and actually bring it to the data domain. This was actually done with uh, Rev 3.3. Uh, .3. Uh, with Rev 3.6, uh, you can actually directly import it into the data domain. It's one less step. And Rev 3.6 also has a VM migrate function we actually can migrate one VM at a time uh, through the uh, Rev Manager UI. So if you're doing one VM at a time, you can probably use the Rev Manager. But if you're looking at mass migrations, uh, cloud migration solution from Red Hat is probably the way to go. Why Red Hat Consulting? So it's actually a global services company. Uh, we actually have the best skills in open source. We actually bring open source to enterprise. We bring the different Red Hat technologies and bring the best practices together. And we actually can deliver everything from the initial strategy uh, to the hands on the keyboard. 
we bring in the SMEs for open source. Almost all the products that actually showed in the Red Hat Cloud Suite have their origins in open source. Uh, Red Hat Cloud Forms, uh, the open source community for that is Manage IQ. Uh, Red Hat Virtualization is Overt. Uh, Red Hat OpenStack is OpenStack. So uh, you'll probably see that almost all the tooling that we use is actually in open source. And Red Hat Consulting actually follows uh, the three Ds. We don't actually design anything before we discover what is required. We don't deploy before we design. You'll hardly see a Red Hat engagement uh, where we're actually doing these large scale migrations or any cloud uh, deployment where they're actually doing a discover, a design, and a deploy. Why do we need discovery? We often seen that uh, if you actually don't discover uh, what is required, you don't identify the drivers, you don't identify the use cases and challenges, it is very difficult to actually plan a migration. You also want to identify the potential technologies. It's not necessary that uh, the technology that we actually have here in our uh, reference deployment is always the same uh, at every customer. We actually come in with an approach, we come in with a proposed solution, but we have seen that every customer is different, Customers have different requirements, they have different environments, so we actually have to tailor, those, tailor to those requirements and actually identify the gaps of what the target state requirements are and actually tailor the solution based on that. Once we actually have that, we probably create an action plan to address those. So we actually have developed what we call the cloud migration smart start. So it is a complete iteration of our service delivery framework but what it actually helps you do is helps you go from zero to a minimum viable platform uh, in four to eight weeks. How do you actually go about deploying it? Iteration one, uh, the goal is to actually design and actually deploy a pilot. So we actually run a discovery session, uh, do a workload analysis, and actually prop define the target architecture and then in the deploy phase, we actually will deploy the target environment, the migration tooling that's required, and the state machine, machines, workflows, and the templates that are required uh, to actually carry out the migration, and also validate uh, the initial set of workloads. Iteration two, we'll actually continue on in the workload analysis, ensure that uh, the first uh, workload group is actually ready, and we actually have a pilot go live. And iteration three is to actually enhance uh, the migration tooling based on the changes and nuances that we see at customer environments and tailor them to actually work. So what does it look like? Uh, the sprints that we actually mentioned here, uh, each sprint is two weeks long. So you actually see here, this is actually a reference implementation where we actually say that for discovery and design, it's one sprint. Uh, Phase two is actually deploying the reference architecture. Uh, it is probably two sprints. Uh, and then it's phase three and beyond. So you probably know, you can calculate how many weeks it is based on each sprint. Have we done this before? Yes, we have. Uh, we actually have done it at uh, multiple customers. So uh, there are a couple of customer success stories. Uh, this was an environment where the customer wanted to have an integrated IaaS and PaaS environment, and they actually wanted to completely standardize on Red Hat. So they actually wanted to replace VMware with OpenStack, and we actually used this approach to actually migrate uh, thousands of workloads. To date, I think we've migrated 6,000 workloads at this customer, and the customer is actually on their own trying to migrate it themselves now. This was a telco where they actually had a vCloud solution uh, that was limited customization, and actually slowing time, and they actually wanted something that actually can understand what's running today and actually make them ready for future. So they actually use this to actually migrate VMs and provision new VMs. And uh, this is the third one where they actually wanted Cloud Forms and Rev as a target platform. Uh, so they actually worked with the customer to actually use the Red Hat Cloud Suite uh, to actually enable them to actually have more agile infrastructure. Before I end, uh, these are some of the training courses that are actually available from Red Hat services uh, that you can take a look at. Uh, 
because it's OpenStack Summit, all I have is the training courses on OpenStack. If you go to redhat.com slash training, you'll probably see a lot more courses on all of the products or the tooling uh, that Red Hat has to offer, part of Red Hat Cloud Suite. And thank you. If anybody has questions, I can probably take them now. So the question was, how do you actually preserve the networking uh, segments from vCloud Director as a part of the migration strategy? Uh, yes, vCloud Director does manage some of the DSCP allocation, but at the end of the day, it is actually working with the virtual switch behind the scenes. So we actually work with that that level. If you actually have specific networks, you actually can pre-provision those networks or make the same networks available to your target platform. And you actually can make sure that you actually have like an inbuilt IPAM within the target infrastructure and migrate. With OpenStack, OpenStack comes with its own DHCP. So if you have IPs, you actually can move them. And instead of allocating IPs automatically, you actually can manually create ports and port groups and actually assign them on the fly. So you know that there's no conflict. Yes? So we have seen environments where the customers were relying on the underlying hypervisor functions, and those are the use cases that I said, as a part of the classification, we actually like to understand what the taxonomy is and what the use cases are, and then propose what the target architectures are. For those workloads that actually rely on infrastructure availability, we would actually propose Rev instead of OpenStack. Uh, OpenStack, the Red Hat implementation of OpenStack comes with instance HA, which is not the same as uh, hypervisor HA, but it does come with HA, so some of those use cases can be handled. Uh, but our target platform for those workloads that rely on hypervisor HA is Rev, so, and Rev gives you that. that that's an important yes, that's a part of... There's a lot of people that, you know, just think it's a forklift. And that's why doing discovery and tagging is required, because it actually helps to identify those workloads and classify them separately. Migration tools that you referenced, are those available to the customer, or does Red Hat do all the migration for them? No, customer? so if you actually engage Red Hat to come and do the initial scoping, uh, so we'll actually come in with the migration tooling, uh, and once we are done, the tooling is yours to actually continue forward. It's not something that's actually available in the open source community. It's a Red Hat consulting build solution. The tooling is all open source, but the specific workflows we actually come in with the consulting solution. So you help the customer get started and they can continue yes. the migration. Okay. And as a, our approach is that we actually help you start, build the minimum viable platform, and actually train you to be able to actually move forward with it. Uh, t two questions. Um, you, you said you use Puppet for some of the uh, maybe post-migration services. Yes. Do you plan to transition that to Ansible given that you bought them? Yes, yeah, so this customer already had Puppet, and it was before the acquisition of Ansible. Okay. And uh, the customer was using upstream Puppet. They're not using Puppet Enterprise or Satellite, so we had to use that. But yes, uh, with the Ansible Tower integration coming into CloudForm soon, uh, that'll actually be the next iteration of the solution. Okay, uh, and the, the, the tooling and the workflows you spoke of, is that available to partners? Uh, it's actually, we can talk about it, uh, okay. as to how we actually can make it available to the partners, uh, because it's actually a consulting-led solution. It's not a product-based solution, right. so that's something that we'll have to work okay. separately. All right. All right, thanks. Okay, good. Okay, I have a question. Um, you talk about the Puppet server. Is our satellite, satellite server, or is just Puppet? No, so the, the customer is actually using their own Puppet server, but yes. Uh, for can customers we, who actually already have satellite, that can be used as a Puppet server to actually can push. Can we do that with satellite server? 
cloud forms already has uh, hooks to actually integrate with satellite natively so that's already built in okay thank you okay good thank you